not easy to tap into the shoes of Yana, uh, especially uh, try to animate and uh, provide an insight on the cities of the future, also in a more funniest way. Not just the funniest way, a serious topic it is. But let me first go a, bit, a little bit back and then I come back to Yana. Uh, let me first express my real gratitude to the organizers and to uh, Michael, uh, which provide me with an insights of how to prepare presentation. And then after that, when I prepared this presentation, then I read instructions in a very German way, 10 points, do not sell what you sell, your products. So then I had a, a serious problem because I need to revert everything. So that's how I'm here today, combined in between suggestion of Michael on one side and on the other side, 10 very strict points on how to approach. So what I would like to challenge now with you and also uh, is uh, we heard about cities yesterday at the workshop. We heard about ecosystems, environments, where the things will move, where the things are already changing, and what is the role of crowd? What is the role of crowd innovation and crowdsourcing much more than crowdfunding, also crowdfunding? So that will be uh, my uh, challenge today, what I would like to share with you. But let's first laugh a bit again. So thanks, Jana, we were very synchronized, as you see. Uh, the picture uh, to the right, that was the promising time 20 years ago, like when we all believed the states will solve the problem, the states will bring us about a just world uh, and prosperity. And we see that today this is not the case. This is not the case. Nevertheless, at that time we tried to keep this optimism. And here I give you a presentation also about my role. I was an activist, NGO activist in Brussels. There is a, a group of uh, NGO uh, advocates that we really believe that countries will change and bring things. And then, of course, there was a very good government in the 90s that was very promising. I don't know how it is today, and I don't know to predict how it will look like if the things would go wrong. So that's why motivation goes to the cities. And that's why seven years already we work with the cities uh, and with 120 definitions, mainly done by big multinational corporations and mainly done by those who drive smart city from technological point of view. But it's not about technology only. There will be people. People will live in these cities. And 70% of all world population will live in the cities in the next four years. So try to imagine about the complexity of daily life, about management, and about potentials of those individuals. So who is crowded? It's a question for me. And how to manage this crowd? OK, let's go first a bit towards data. Of course, there is an age of data. We gather data from various devices. Ones are stored, ones are not. Ones are structured, and others are not unstructured. So we can see here about the complexity and the whole scale of big data that today exists in the environments like city is. And let's go a step further. Many cities today are in the process of digital transformation and they create the ecosystem when cities will gather all data in a special platforms. And again, who is an owner of this data? How this data is regulated? So I would not go into regulation questions which we already touched upon, but they're pretty much similar on that is a really big challenge for cooperation between governments and cities and what legal frameworks will be to regulate the whole issues of open data, accessibility of data, ownership of data, privacy of data, 
in relation to digital transformation of cities. Okay, so now let's come closer to the citizens and mayors. We work for seven years with mayors to consult them and advise how to approach, city, how to approach smart city. And actually, there were no real governance tools for management of this complexity and to involve citizens. Why? Because there are so many different approaches to the mayors that are, they are actually lost. And what they say at the end of the day, OK, can this bring me quality of life in my city? If yes, then also smart city is OK. And what is important, how citizens are involved in this. Not only every four or five years when mayor is elected, but actually during the different uh, periods of the year when different issues arise. So that's very important, the empowerment of citizens. OK, let's go further. So on the basis of that, the concept of smart city, where Europe is really is a taking a lead uh, in a conceptual way, uh, was designed together with institutional partners like European Commission, European Investment Bank. And actually, the bottom line was and were citizens. And speaking about smart governments, governance actually is how to involve citizens in a smarter way. How to communicate with people, how to bring about transparency, responsiveness, and that is when mayor will feel confident as being a smart mayor of smart city. And the things are as they were 2,000 years ago. First, house, if we see the pillars, energy, water, and mobility to enable better mobility. So those are the basic necessary services and good quality services, first of all, and then all the rest. And then, of course, there is about identity of the city. Each city is very special, specialized by itself. And at the end, and the bottom line, digital technologies are only an enabler. It's only an enabler to involve citizens, to co-create city, and to move better. OK. So now coming to the crowd, and where is the collective knowledge gathering. We saw the picture before. There's so much potential. So how we can use this potential? How we can really involve citizens to feel to participate? For example, mayors, they have the office who's responsible for complaints. We all know very famous the Fix My Street London application, for example. And these are they exist many tools for that. But the real issue is how I motivate citizens to be involved in co-creation, co-design of my city, where they can contribute to the vision building, where they can contribute with the concrete projects using data to improve performance of the city. Those are a real challenge. And here we see like crowd platforms can be really of a very good use, of, of good use uh, for citizens. But with that, and that's revolution going on there, with that, they touch those ones that didn't participate. They touch this part of society that never were involved in governance. Why? Because they, they see they can do business if they are entrepreneurs. They see they can advocate their NGO agenda because they can make a pressure on it and make a proposal, and they are okay with that. And the others, they can use data also for research purposes. So with that, the crowdsourcing is entering and bringing intelligence for improving the governance and better state of the art of the cities. OK, ideation, that's what is on. Not only complain, how many complaints, but I want at 6 o'clock when I come, when I see what is current situation in the city, I want to also be, I want to pass idea, not just to complain. And that's about higher quality of life, and that's about 
how new how platforms can help uh, to improve the life in the cities. Of course, there are many good cases of uh, crowdsourcing competition where cities engage for different solutions in different parts of the city. I would not go now into uh, some of the examples, but many of you are probably familiar uh, with them. Uh, last but not least, uh, crowd complementors. Again, invited by uh, Michael and Thomas to the Crowd Society, it's a crowd dialogue for the second time. For me, a major challenge was how convert my work into not the buzzwords of crowd gathering, crowd dialogue, but actually how from foresight and digital entrepreneurship convert, not convert, synchronize with the crowd dialogue and initiative. Why? Because there are over competition between different concepts and initiatives. But at the end of the day, there is only one mayor, an entrepreneur, and it's not easy to understand what is in for me in all these so-called crowd complex approaches. Uh, with that, I will go to the last uh, a bit provocative slide. And with that, I will finish. The question today is uh, not anymore big crowd or not to be, because the crowd is evident. The question is to be a bit smart and not only survive and complain, but also co-create and bring ideas, whatever and whatever we are doing, uh, for the better of tomorrow. And those are one example and one ecosystems uh, for that are cities of the future. Thank you very much.